Okay, we'll bring it around slowly here and uh, drop the airspeed, bring it down into landing configuration, straighten it up, set the flaps, and pull the power. So there's the throttle back to idle. Lead the airspeed down to 60. 15 degrees flaps. 30 degrees flaps. Keep that 60. And that'll give us a descent rate of about five to 600 feet a minute. And that is a landing configuration. Now we'll just ease back gently. Bring that nose up, increase the angle of attack and induce the stall. They are 50 knots. Work that rudder. Keep the ball centered. 50 knots. 45. 45. 40. 40. And there it is. Okay, while we're just cruising along here, it's a good idea to keep in mind four key points about stalls. Number one, stalls can occur at any pitch attitude, bank angle, and airspeed. Number two, stalls are caused by exceeding the critical angle of attack. Uh, this is despite the fact that low airspeed is often a, an associated factor. Number three, stall characteristics are very different for each aircraft and must be learned for that aircraft. And number four, stalls are broken by reducing the angle of attack, uh, increasing airspeed, and establishing coordinated flight. Okay, now it's time to do a power on stall. We're clear of the airport about 10 miles out, out of any airwaves. We've got uh, 3,000 feet uh, AGL. We've done left and right clearing turns. PCAS is clear of any traffic. Got me a landing spot lined up if I should need it. And so we'll power down a little bit because power, off st uh, power on stalls in uh, this particular aircraft have to be done at about 75% power. Otherwise, the uh, deck angle is too steep and it could cause problems with the functioning of the Rotax carburetors. Just too high of an angle of attack. Anyway, we'll slow it down to uh, around 4,000 RPMs, and we'll get into a departure mode, which is a uh, climb out of about uh, 60 knots, VY. So we'll establish that, and there we are. We're 60 knots now, got about uh, 4,000 RPMs. Now we'll just gradually come back on the stick until that angle of attack uh, results in a stall. And all the while keeping uh, control of the rudder, that's our main um, control as we slow down and go into the stall. Okay, there we are, about 48 knots, 45. Keep that ball centered. Starting to break up. And there it is. Pretty benign stall in the Sting airplane. Okay, despite all the practice that we do on stalls, we have to keep this topic in perspective. Because the stall that tries to take us out someday won't be one we're doing at 2,500 feet above ground. It won't be expected and it won't be intentional. No, it's most likely to be one that occurs on takeoff, on landing, or on a go-round, especially at a short airfield. Also likely to be associated with the bad stall is distractions, gusting winds, and maybe turbulence. Okay, so the next question that comes begging is, why do we practice stalls? Well, that's pretty easy. We practice stalls so we can learn to recognize, avoid, and recover from stalls in our particular airplane, with an emphasis on our particular airplane. But there's more to the stall story than uh, we've heard so far and seen so far. So let's return to the hangar, 
for a little bit more of the rest of the story before we come back up and do some slow flight work. The story of stalls begins here with the wings. Air flowing around and over the upper and lower surfaces creates differential air pressures which lift the wing and airplane. Okay, let's assume this piece of tape represents airflow. There, you see how airflow is really stuck to the wing and is smooth? This is a laminar flow and is what generates maximum lift. Wings can have many different designs and shapes, but every wing has a cord line, an imaginary line from leading to trailing edge. The angle between the cord line and the relative oncoming air is angle of attack. But lift only occurs for a finite range of angle of attack. When the critical angle of attack is exceeded, lift is lost and a stall occurs. Stalls occur because airflow over the wings breaks up and becomes turbulent. Usually this breakup progresses from the wing root to tip and from trailing to leading edges. The initial turbulence arises here and then hits the tail. We feel a burble or buffeting effect. This is our natural stall warning. Stalling speeds in the POH are based on sea level standard conditions and maximum gross weight. At lower weight, stall speeds are lower. Having a handle on gross weight for every takeoff and landing is step one in judging stalling risk. Here's a dangerous stall situation to avoid. You come in on the 45. You turn downwind. But there's a crosswind blowing you towards the runway. You fail to correct for it and end up too close to the runway. Then, with a shortened base leg and excess speed from the tailwind, you instinctively raise the nose to reduce speed and turn sharper than normal to final. A stall and deadly spin occurs. It's game over. Now let's do some slow flight. I'll pull the power, bleed airspeed down to 60 knots, and add full 30 degree flaps. I'll fly straight and level just as slow as I can. The airspeed where any further power reduction, angle of attack increase, or additional loading will create an immediate stall. Now today the airplane is 240 pounds under gross weight, so I expect a slow flight speed of about 40 knots. If we get slight buffeting and hold it there, we'll be just about right. Note how at this airspeed, the ailerons are getting mushy and unresponsive. As airflow diminishes, control effectiveness is lost. Ailerons go first, elevator second, rudder last. Rudder is our primary control in slow flight. Flying with rudder control alone takes practice because it's more intellectual than instinctive. Your instincts lie to you and tell you to use the ailerons. Now, lest you think that an airplane that can fly at 40 knots and stalls at less than that cannot also be fast, well, let me just put the hammer down and demonstrate. There, we're straight and level, 2,000 feet, pulling 120 knots indicated at 5,200 RPMs. And this baby can fly all day at 5,400 RPMs, drinking four gallons per hour auto gas. Well, it's time to head for the barn now and practice the most important stall of all. It's called landing. And while I'm doing that, you can peruse my 13-point checklist for avoiding dangerous stalls.
Thanks for watching. Browse my other videos at Sting Flight. And subscribe. It's free. Wherever you are in the world, share your aviation. Share aviation. A network for pilots by pilots.